you guys, I'm making a video here today to show how you can greatly improve the performance of your Unity game uh, with no cost, no asset store, just a very quick script that you can do. So uh, first I'll explain a little bit about occlusion culling in case you don't know about it. Um, essentially the idea is that uh, whatever you see through your camera, it's, the game will only render what's actually in your view and not things that are behind or otherwise obstructed from your view. Um, so this will have a great effect on performance because you're not, you know, rendering objects that the player can't see anyways. So in a sense, that's kind of a, a bit of a waste to do that. So uh, now there's a couple ways you can go about this. Uh, the most common way is uh, something called static uh, occlusion culling, which is how it's usually done in Unity. And then basically Unity will handle this for you. However, if you're making a procedurally generated game, like I am in this case, where you have uh, randomly generated mazes or interior levels, then you're basically going to have to write your own system um, to have dynamic occlusion culling. So I just want to show you guys a really quick example of what this could look like. So just in this example here, if you look on the left, this is the level on the right, it's my player character. Uh, and you can see I. I can see through this door just slightly, so we have one enemy visible, and he just went out of sight. But let's say we look at a different angle, suddenly we have enemies popping out because they become in line of sight. So these are things we need to render. Now I just want to show you guys right now, this is a pretty large level, it's 100 by 100. Uh, if I, uh, when I'm running like this, I'm at about, you know, 100 and 120 FPS or so. Now, if I turn this off and we render everything in a level, as you can see, the frame rate drops significantly to about 25 to 30 FPS at a given point. Now, this is wasteful because we're not really seeing any of the stuff that's going on in the background anyway, so let's just turn that off again. And now we're back in, you know, occlusion coloring mode. So this can be a huge performance increase for any game you're making with these sort of interior environments. So uh, without further ado, let me give you a brief overview of what this very simple system looks like. So uh, this is just how I did it. You don't have to do it this way, but I found it's pretty easy to do it like this. So essentially, I just have a component, which I call a clue D, that I put on any objects that I want to um, block when they're out of sight of the camera. Now, uh, all this class does essentially is it kind of functions like a tag so that the uh, class above it, whatever manager you have is going to um, be able to tell what you're trying to include and what you're not. So essentially I'm just making the um, that class aware of it by adding itself to its list. And uh, I had this extra condition here, it's called special condition. And this can be used if you want to have like, um, I use in my AI for example, if it's actively chasing you then that means it's close by and I don't want it to be popping in and out, so we're going to ignore occlusion when something is you know, actively chasing or fighting with you. So that's just one example. You can do all kinds of stuff with this component. You could add like a minimum distance before you know, it gets occluded, or you can only hide the mesh render instead of the whole object. But um, yeah, that's essentially, we co we're collecting all these occludes, and then it's a very simple logic, just basically whatever your manager script is, I'm doing it here. Um, you're just going to do a simple distance and a raycast check, essentially, for, um, for each, each occluded object. So um, we have a minimum distance that I've set. I've just set this arbitrary number. Again, this could be per occluded or however you want to set it. And if things are too close, we don't want them popping them out around the corner, so we don't include them. And then I have this method here, which is essentially, it's very simple, it's just a line cast. I include some layers here, so we only do it for walls and doors, um, since it's an interior level. And uh, yeah, essentially we're just checking if uh, a wall is obstructing between uh, the player's position and whatever the occluded's position is. So uh, yeah, basic line cast stuff. And yeah, we just that's pretty much it. We set it active based on that. Again, there's more ways you can extend it, but. Um, this is just a very simple system I wrote in about an hour that could save you time and money. Uh, there are a lot of assets on the asset store, but they didn't work quite the way I needed for my specific game. So, yeah, just um, give that a shot and uh, let me know what you think. This can be a way to
drastically increase your FPS by a factor of three or four with relatively little effort.